Hey, I'm Greg Hale. And I'm Mike Douglas, and today we're gonna share some of our tips for winter camping. Winter camping is an amazing way to get off the grid and to get deeper into the mountains to places you can't explore in a single day. And so today we're gonna go through our backpacks and other tips that we have to make winter camping more comfortable and make your first trip more successful. So before you head out into the mountains, you wanna check the weather forecast, number one. You wanna check the avalanche forecast, make sure the conditions are gonna be safe. And you also wanna make a plan so that someone knows when you're leaving and when you plan to be back. So we're gonna assume that you've done some summer camping before and have a basic idea of how to camp out in the mountains. In winter, it's essential to have a camp spot that is not an avalanche terrain and that is protected from the prevailing winds. And that protection can be trees, it can be rocks, or it can be a ridge. But that'll keep your camp nice and calm and quiet. And also to have it nice and flat. Those are the three things I look for in my winter camp spots. My first step when I start setting up my winter camp spot is to go over and flatten out my tent spot with my skis and let that harden while I work on other things before setting up the tent. Comfort and warmth while I'm sleeping is essential. So I have a burly four season tent that can withstand whatever the mountains are gonna throw at us. And then I have two sleeping mats. I have this closed cell mat that I will sit on and use all around camp and then have as a bottom layer when I'm sleeping. I've got a really nice inflatable insulated mat for, for on top of that. I've got an inflatable pillow and I've got a nice minus 12 sleeping bag. Those are essential. And then I've got a full setup of clothing in here, socks and, and warm layers and thermals and everything just to keep me comfortable and warm in camp. And these I do not wear while I'm hiking or skiing. They're only for camp. One thing I've learned from winter camping is that you can never be too warm or too dry. So make sure you dress in layers. You want to get uh, clothing that has good moisture wicking and is quick drying. Uh, the Solomon base layers are great. Also, I find merino wool to work really well. Not only does it dry out quick, keep you warm, but it doesn't smell. So that's kind of a bonus. I always bring the warmest, biggest puffy jacket that I have. I always bring an extra set of gloves. And this is one of my camp favorites, the down booties. So that when my ski boots come off, I can cruise around camp and, uh, and keep my feet warm. When it comes to food, you, the one, number one thing that you need for sure is a stove and a good one that will work in windy or challenging conditions because the stove is how you melt the snow to make your water. It's also how you rehydrate your food. If you're going lightweight, you're definitely going to want some dehydrated food. Uh, water bottles are key. I find these Nalgene's work really well. Also, you want to bring a thermos so that you can keep your water hot. Now, one thing that's not totally necessary, but we like to do is bring along a very lightweight tent with a single pole, and we use that as a cooking tent. And what that does is helps keep your living area dry so that you're not cooking in and around your tent or you're not out trying to cook in the elements. You've got a little bit of shelter. You keep the moisture that's coming off your stove from filling up your tent and making things wet, and just gives you a lot more space. Typically in the summertime, you take your tent pegs and you put them in like this, but that doesn't really hold in the snow. So what we do is we do T-slot anchors. So you tie your rope around it horizontally like that, you bury them in the snow, and once you pack the snow in and leave that for a period of time, that becomes really strong. So for anchors, I'll use a stick, I'll use a bag, I'll use the tent pegs. Sometimes I'll even use my skis and my poles, but if I wanna go skiing, then I don't wanna use them because I wanna make sure my tent is anchored and will not go away while we're out having fun. So tying your tent down securely for winter camping is crucial because it doesn't matter how calm it might be when you're setting things up, the mountain weather can change really quick and can get pretty severe. So the last thing you want to be doing is trying to fix your tent in the middle of the night. So get that thing secured down, make sure that you use all your guy wires and your pegs and get it solid. So once the tent is secure and tied down, I like to take a shovel and go around the base of the tent and just kind of seal it in so that you don't get any drafts blowing in and your tent rattling during the night. This is a pro tip that makes winter camping better than summer camping, is you can dig a hole just outside of your tent that allows you to, every time you're getting out of your tent, you've got this great area to put your boots on and to maneuver and to comfortably get up and walk out of your tent. 
So I'm sitting in the cook tent, I've got water boiling, and what's great about this is this becomes our social. This is our, our living room, it's where we all end up hanging out. And it's good because I'm an early riser, I'll come out here early and not disturb people and I'll get breakfast going. Or those people that like to stay out late can stay out late while the other people are sleeping in the tent. And you can get really creative, you can make benches, you can make tables, you can make like drawers, you can do whatever you want with it, which is really fun. This is where the closed cell foam becomes really important. I've got a seat that I can comfortably sit on for hours and stay warm with. And then I'll use this afterwards in my tent to sleep on. The best piece of gear out here. So while Greg's in there getting the water and the food going, I'm out here trying to build a little bit of a windbreak because it's kind of windy and the cook tent does not have the same way of securing uh, like our sleeping main tent does. The jury's kind of out on whether you build a wall in front of your tent or not. Some people like to do it to try and block as much wind as possible. Uh, other times you can, if it's snowing a lot, the, the wall will actually sometimes form a snowdrift over your tent, so that can be a negative. I kind of like to have just enough to secure the tent down, um, but I prefer to let the snow actually blow over the tent because I've had to dig out a buried tent in the morning, it's not that fun. So camp's pretty much set up. We've got the kitchen, we've got the sleeping, and there's a really important thing we don't want to overlook, and that is the pee zone. It may seem like a no-brainer, but the last thing you want to be doing is peeing in the same spot you get your water. Establish a pee zone so everybody knows where to go and make sure you get your water from somewhere far away. So Mike and I are in the tent now. We've each got our side and I like to have our feet oriented towards the exit. So that way it's easier to get in and out of the tent without disturbing your partner and also to keep snow and stuff just by the doorway. When it comes to sleeping bags, you're never going to be too warm when you're winter camping. Always get a bag that's rated at least 5 degrees below the temperature you think you're going to be in. Comfortable sleeping is essential because I need energy for tomorrow, for the next day of the adventure, so I bring a pillow. This thing's inflatable, it goes down to the size of a fist, and to me this gives me a much better sleep. I'm not as fancy as Greg, so I just use a cotton t-shirt and uh, stuff it full of my, my softest puffy jacket and uh, makes for a nice pillow to sleep on. One of the hacks that makes winter camping better is to get a hot liter of water that you bring into your sleeping bag to make it easier to get into your sleeping bag at night. And then it also allows you to have water ready for the morning to cook with. Um, but make sure you test it at home first with hot water because it could expand and then leak. So this one's tested, it's hot and ready to warm my feet up. And speaking of bottles, one of the toughest things you can ever have to do winter camping is get up in the middle of the night for a pee. So a lot of people like to bring a spare bottle, a well-marked bottle, and, uh, and pee in it. Uh, you keep it in the tent, and then in the morning when you get up, you take it and you go dump it out. So in the winter, things are going to get damp. Um, if they're only mildly damp, we'll put them up here to dry overnight. But if, they're, if they really need to be dried, it's a tough thing to do, but I'll bring them inside my sleeping bag and let my body heat dry them overnight. Always make sure you grab your headlamp before it gets dark because there's nothing worse than fumbling around in the dark trying to find it. And then when I take it off at night when I go to sleep, I always put it in the same place. It goes right next to my head in this little pouch right here. That way I've always got access to light. So there you have it. Those are some of our tips and our tricks that will hopefully make winter camping better and easier for you. Yeah, and if we've missed anything or you got any questions or maybe you've got some hacks of your own, make sure you leave them in the comments. Subscribe to Solomon TV because there's more episodes coming. Yeah, and uh, have some fun in the mountains. We hope to see you out there, and uh, good nights, winter camping. Play safe. Bye.